we are live. It says that I am live on internet and I move my arms like this. Hello, everyone. Hello, artists, entertainers, educators, puppet lovers, my friends, whoever's watching right now. This is the More Gigs podcast. So, what do I say at the beginning? I say, oh, yeah, I say this week's podcast is about. The true, the real, so the real cost of not being able to live from your art, what is it, the real cost? And so the purpose of the More Gigs podcast is to help artists to understand that they have to get out there, they have to promote, they have to use marketing to get their art out there. So let's hit it. Oh, what an amazing intro. I made it myself. So thanks for watching the More Gigs podcast. So as always, uh, we have our co-host, or I think he is the host, and I'm actually the co-host. Um, and he is an amazing puppeteer and entertainer with 25 years of experience. So let me present you the one and only Michael Harding. Hey, what's up, Eli? I'm good in you. Oh, pretty good. Thanks for having me uh, be on my podcast with you. Yes, uh, I'm glad to be your co-host. So <laughs> yeah, it's been a while since we speak. It's been two weeks. It's two been weeks. two weeks. Yes. Yeah, everybody. So I, I missed this. So, so Mike, so introduce yourself and, and tell us a little bit about what you do and why you actually accepted to be the host for this sure. podcast. <laughs> okay. Well, I decided to be the host of this podcast and then to invite Eli to be my co-host <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I'm a puppeteer and Eli is my coach. He helps me with my the business part of, of what I do. And I'm a puppeteer over 20, almost 25 years of puppeteering at uh, doing puppet shows, like just like a traditional puppet show, two puppets talking one puppeteer inside of a booth then you switch and you have a bunch of different puppets and so that's that's my thing i do birthday parties and libraries and daycares and schools and festivals and all of those things and and um and i'm here to to sort of hope to help eli to get eli to help me to help everyone else sort of be inspired and to work hard as an artist whether it's puppetry or whatever your art is, just make sure you do it. And then more importantly, to make sure people know that you're doing it. Yeah. That's can what be, I hope to do. It could be belly dancing. Do, do, do. Belly dance. It could be. Um... <laughs> <laughs> All right. It could be That's anything. the only art I could think of belly dancing because <laughs> you said it and puppets. There you go. Belly Ballet. Dancing. It's the Ballet, Belly Dancing, and Puppets podcast, more gigs. So, all more right, gigs. so today's episode is about um, the real cost of not being able to live from your art, right? So why we chose this subject is because sometimes we feel that, all right, we have a passion, we like to draw, or we like to dance, or we like to do puppetry, but who would buy this and who would actually be interested in my little art i know i know some amazing painters that are actually not painting and that are like amazing painters and this is why i wanted to talk about this subject today um and and actually i would ask uh mike to uh just tell us like if you were not being to if you're not able to be actually what you're doing right now, you're a full-time puppeteer online and in person. Like, how would how would you feel? What what would be your life without this? Yeah, I wanted to ask first your friends who are painters, but they're not painting. Is it that they're not painting, or is it that they're not um, selling any paintings? What what did you mean? I would say both. Oh. Okay. 
yeah. they're doing something else besides. Like, uh, yeah, I know. Like, yeah, they have another job, and 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 like they have an, a crazy talent, but they're actually not painting and not selling. Like, like both. Right, right. And, but and they, they are yeah. painters, though, right? Like they call themselves so painters, painters, right? right. So. Yeah, they have, a great, they have a great talent and they're they're simply not using it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the tricks, right? I guess is when you get a job, like a, a normal job. And then, um, and, and then you don't maybe think you have time to do your art. And so that's one of the important things is to um, make time for it and to, to do it right it's hard it's hard it's hard for sure but um you know when i first started someone said to me and this was good advice they said i did i i don't know if i told you this before but i was wanting to be i was in my 20s or maybe early 20s and i was thinking about wanting to be a puppeteer and i had my one of my mom's friends was a judge but he used to sort of work in like before he was a judge he worked in the entertainment field and so she thought I should talk to him about this, about this wanting to be a puppeteer thing. Because there's really hard, it's hard to find anybody to talk to about wanting to be a puppeteer, yeah. right? Especially in your suburban, like, parents, friends circle, right? So this was, like, maybe the closest thing we could think of to who might. And he just said, he had such good advice, though. He said, you want to be a puppeteer? Start calling yourself a puppeteer then. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's yeah. it. That's exactly it. Yeah. That's it. And he's and then I'm like, oh, that's it? He's like, yeah. Because when you're a puppeteer, you don't really have to like – I mean, you have to be skilled and everything, right, and, and get educated. But to start, just start calling yourself a puppeteer. And then, then your mind changes, right, and then you just start – Okay, I'm a puppeteer now. Like your friend who, that's why I asked, I think, your friend who is a painter. Yeah. They call themselves, even though they're working that other job, they still, you still call them a painter, right? Yeah. Because well, that's what they are. And that's yeah. it. Like, if you deny that thing that you are, a painter, uh, a puppeteer, or whatever, then you, you probably may suffer for that right and so you don't have to do it as a job but if you can you you got to honor it i think yeah that's a great point just to call and sometimes people wait wait until they're perfect oh no or, yeah that's or really highly skilled oh i got another one then oh good <laughs> i got a quote from jonathan winters this week jonathan winters the comedian i don't know if you remember but mork and mindy he was uh he was Mork, Mork's son, but he was older than Mork because of the planet they were from. But I anyway, he's a, uh, Jonathan Summers. Jonathan Winters, it's another <laughs> season. I don't it's remember. A different, it's a different <laughs> season, Winters. Uh, Jonathan. But he's a very famous comedian anyways. Very famous, but way from way back. And his quote was, I hope I get it right. I'm not getting it exact. But his quote was, I didn't have time to wait for success. So I just started anyways. <laughs> wow. It was something like that. Like, don't, like you just said, you, you got to just like, you got to take a risk and it's not going to be easy. And you got to like be uncomfortable. Yeah. Not all the time, not every second of your life. There's going to be lots of times to relax too. But, but at the same time, like you put yourself out there, start, if you want to be a puppeteer, start calling yourself that and then start doing if you got and then you got his my the other advice i got from that guy was uh you know find someone who will let you do puppet shows it wasn't find someone who will pay you to do puppet shows <laughs> it was fine <laughs> just let you do puppet shows <laughs> and so then i found like a bookstore right where i could go and i did them almost for free but just to, for fun and for uh and then it grew out of that i never planned to be a puppeteer really i wanted to be a puppeteer but i never had a plan it just happened i was luck i wasn't lucky but i was i i started you know exactly. um and then it grew it grew yeah you went into action and, and this is yeah this is actually one thing i, I also uh teach who whoever artists i i help like like when you when you're actually just starting that you have some talent of course you, you want to be a professional in what you do but you don't have to have 
success before starting, but if you just start, you can actually accept to do free gigs at first just to get it rolling and get some experience and get uncomfortable and feel how it's like and get better at it. So mm -hmm. yes, just by like at first it's it's a hobby, right? There's no singer, there's no painter, there's no actor or movie maker that actually from one day to the other were, hey, now I'm Steven Spielberg, the best uh, in the world. Like there was the the gradual expansion or, or uh, increase in popularity and in talent that actually came uh, with time. So, um, so yeah, so that was a great, you were, these were great quotes, quotes, man. So, so <laughs> now, it's my, now it's my turn. Oh, I, I thought my turn was still going. No, is it your no, turn no, no. now? Yeah. My turn maybe, seems like it was too short. No, maybe we'll come back to you afterwards. Maybe. So, so if I'm still here, maybe yes, I'm going exactly. to leave. <laughs> maybe you'll go eat dessert. Uh, so, so I wanted to talk about the real cost of not being able to live from your art. And it's not very complicated, actually. Like the real cost is what you are not bringing to others. Because what is art if it's not something that you give to others to inspire them, to give them more happiness? Like you go to the movie theaters, you, you go out and you're like, oh man, that was so good. You go to see a, a, mu a music show, a music, uh, uh, yeah, music show. And you're like, oh man, this band is amazing. I love the end. You go to see a puppet show with your kids or for yourself and you're like, Oh, this puppet show made me think about life. And I was like, I remember when I, I went with Caroline uh, to see the, uh, oh, it's a clown show and it's really well known. And at the end, there's like full of, of wind and like snow. Um, it's a, it, actually, I don't remember, but it's a clown show and with big music at the end. Hmm. And it was so inspiring. And, uh, you go up from these places and you're like, you're thinking about all your life and the stuff that you want to accomplish because you feel inspired. So this is, this is the real cost of not being able to live from your art. And I'll give you some examples, okay? Celine Dion, I, I come from Quebec and she does too. So imagine for a minute, if Celine Dion, when she was, Find, found by Rene and Jalil. Imagine if she said, no, I don't want to be a singer. Rene and Jalil give me a... What is that, moonshine? It's water. Oh, okay. Because Rene and Jalil voice is hard for me. Okay. <laughs> so imagine if she would have stayed in her own basement and it would have sing only for her own family. She would have said, no, I, want, I don't want to be in the showbiz. Imagine the millions of people who would have not been inspired by her. Another good example, Cirque du Soleil. My own girlfriend actually worked for them. <clears throat> but imagine at first if Guy La Liberté would have not had the, the, have the idea of starting this or making this Cirque grow bigger. Imagine all the people who would have not been inspired by them. Same thing with Michael Jackson, Michael Harding, you know, yes. all these people that they actually inspire. So this is the real cost of not being able to live from your art or through your art. So this is my advice to you. If you have an art any kind of art or craft that you actually really want to do or are actually doing right now and that some people know and some people like. If some people like it, that means that a lot of people can like it. And that means that a lot of people can be inspired by it. So it costs you just a little bit more time or a little bit more money to actually put your art out there and this will make you more happy to be able to actually promote your art because you know that it's going to be 
I give a great effect to others. And if it's not for you, do it for others. The more art we can bring out in the society, the happier the society will be. The less art we put there, the less happy the society will be. It's, it's a common indicator. We have to put more art there. And I, I have something I, have, I want to tell because this is something I, I, I really hate. And this is my personal opinion, but anyway. You know the music, the video clip, music video clips. It seems like more and more the singers have to be freaking naked in their video clips to be popular. And I hate this. If you are a singer, you're not a naked person. You are a singer. Like, you wouldn't want to be naked if you had, you had to be a great puppeteer, if you had to be <laughs> almost naked in your show, right? There's something wrong happening with art that has to be corrected. And a good singer don't have to be like in underwear in their, sh in their music video. And I, I'm telling you this because I, I, there's a song I like and yesterday I was working and I went on YouTube to listen to the song. And I was watching the video clip. There was like girls kissing. Like, I was like, what the, what the hell is this? Like, it's just a song. Why, why would you put like almost like a porn video in your, in your video <laughs> clip? It's music. Like, it's art. You don't mix like things that don't go together. So anyway, that's just my a little bubble I had on my mind. And. So, and that's why if you have art that can inspire people, make sure that you are actually getting it out there so people get inspired. If you are keeping it for yourself and you actually want to do it and put it out there, then you'll regret it. And what do you think about when you're older? All the great effects that you created on others in your life. So you don't want to regret this. You want to do it now. And this is why I offer this coaching marketing to any kind of artist that want to have help. Me and Mike, we, we meet every week. And his business just went through the pandemic upwards like this. So yeah. anyway, so I don't know if you want to say something else because I, I told you that we would get back to you. Oh, good. I've been, I was hoping. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just wanted to add like, uh, yeah, one step at a time is really important to keep in mind. Like, yeah, you mentioned some good examples there like Celine Dion and, and the Cirque du Soleil guys and uh, all of those. But, you know, sometimes I think too, you, you look at uh, those examples and they're so big and you think, oh, how am I going to get to that? Or, you know, for puppeteers, we always look at the Muppets, right? But the important thing to always keep in mind is like, it's always one step at a time. And as long as you make, um, the, they don't have to be huge steps, but always, I always try to like each day, you know, make sure I, I take some steps in the right direction. What, you know, you can't always make, uh, huge steps every day, but if, as long as you're taking steps forward towards doing your art more often or, or marketing your art more or whatever it is, just building your, your business. If it's a business, yeah. um, then you can um, sleep better at night because you know, you made some effort, right? And it, it doesn't have to be anything huge. It could be just a little step, but, and then eventually, you know, things start to pick up. And also uh, the other benefit I think, uh, or negative, if you don't do it of, of doing your your art is you'll start to get feedback right from other people and so when you do your art just for yourself that's one thing and you don't know if it's good or it's bad but you know you like doing it but um but when you start to do it for other people and tell other people about it and show other people then you're going to get feedback and sometimes it's negative but most of the time it's not hardly ever actually you know most people have nice things to say and then that's going to help you too like um and you won't get that if you don't if you don't start, right? If you don't start uh, putting yourself out there and, and showing people what you're made out of, it's, um, yeah. you know, you don't have anything to lose, right? Really? Yeah, it's your, <clears throat> life is a creation. So 
yeah. you are creating every day. Would it be like with your your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your kids, your work, your art, whatever it is, you create every day. So, and and one thing that is really important, and it, it goes with what you were just saying, is, and unfortunately, that's that's unfortunately, but a lot of people have actually uh, given up on their dreams, and that's yeah. the that's the sad thing about this is that when they see someone that's actually pushing really hard towards his own dreams, some people would actually want to criticize you or stop you from going there because they actually have given up on their own dreams. So you have to make sure that when you decide to do something, would it be art or whatever, like a venture you want to start, you have to decide and never stop whatever people are going to tell you or give their opinion on things because people love to give their own opinions even if they don't even know the yep. uh, the subject in my life the it's not even been opinions from other people but even your own self right your own those opinions that you say to yourself oh this isn't a real job or you, you have no business doing that. Right. What's that called? Imposter syndrome or something like that. What I don't know, yeah. but, but you, yeah. Um, I'm not good enough. Yeah. I'm just starting, you know, I don't have experience. I'll of never, course. I'll never make money doing this or I mean, yeah. just, you have to really watch about what you the dialogue is you have with yourself, I think. Totally. Like, not only you have to watch your own opinions in your head, but the other people's opinions. So you have to make sure that the decision is very firm. Okay. And, and it's good that you, if you are an artist and you, you don't really know where to start, then it's good if you have a day job and you just keep your day job until you start actually understanding how you can sell this art. Could it be paintings, dancing? circus act whatever so but until you promote nobody will know you exist nobody will know about your art and and yeah so there you go so that this is the true cost of not being able to live from your art is not inspiring the people you are supposed to inspire that's it this is the true cost there's no other cost because you can still work wherever. There's always going to be a job at McDonald's, whatever, like any retail store, banks, whatever. There's always going to be jobs there. But who are you really inspiring by doing these jobs? Burger, uh, eat, burger lovers. <laughs> 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 so, so anyway, so for any artists out there, I want you to rethink how you promote your art and rethink if you promote your art or not if you're doing zero promotion then maybe start with one piece of promotion one post on social media one quick video one email sent one business called you know small steps like mike said like you go by gradient gradient scale one and then two and then three and then whatever and the more you do this over time, the more it's, it's going to become like a muscle. And the more it's going to give you results. There's no overnight success. Ask anyone that's successful. It doesn't exist except if you win on the lottery. But still, is it a success? No, you just bought a ticket. Right? So you just have to work at it, work at it. And if you really like it, then you'll work at it from 10 years old until you're 80 years old. You know, when it's, it's a passion, why would you stop? Like, it's not like a nine to five day job. This you will stop eventually. But the art, you will do this until you die. It's communication. Art is to communicate to others, right? So, oh, I have, I, I have some notes. So I'm going to end with this. So, oh, uh, there's notes? Yeah, I, I, I wrote some notes. So, are you? I have Are three you reading costs. them? Looks yeah, like yeah, you're I'm, reading them. I'm gonna read them. So there's three costs. The this costs, isn't very professional. No, no, I I'm just starting. 
Oh, okay, okay. Okay. It's okay. So, so it's the okay. so the cost number one, the cost number <laughs> one is your own happiness. Regret. You don't want regret. to regret anything. Might as well because, try. Exactly. Cost number two. Oh, I told you this already. All the people that you will not inspire because you kept your art for yourself. This is huge. And number three. Oh yeah. Well, that, that was a personal opinion of mine, but if people <laughs> if people don't go to see art shows, what do they do instead? They get into all kinds of trouble. Drink, party, whatever, trouble. Like imagine they race uh, they do street racing. Street racing, of course, they can do whatever they want. They can Netflix and chill, but <laughs> it would be preferable if it was a really uh, amazing art piece that will inspire them for the whole month, right? Better than like a TV series. All right, so... Mike, do why do you think it's important to inspire artists to do more? Well, for all of the things we already talked about tonight, just so that uh, they can get, so we can get more art out into the world, right? That's the main. That's the main thing. So we can get all kinds of different voices and art that looks different from all the other art we've already seen before or it looks the same but it's done slightly differently or uh, there's maybe a brand new art form out there that no one's even thought of yet so i just oh, wow. that's right it could happen it yeah. could have happens before it's yeah. happened before so yeah. just to like yeah just to to give that message like if you have some idea or something that is in the back of your head and you think oh, i think i might like to do that or uh, I'd like to try that, or I've always wanted to be a bass guitar player. We'll take, I, I just want to be here to say, like, just take that, that first step, you know, like, just go sign up for, you don't even have to sign up for a lesson, but take, take a lesson online for, uh, how to learn how to play the bass guitar or whatever it is that, that you have brewing, you know, don't, don't think about them too much. Take those little steps and see where it goes. Get into action. That's the best Get into advice. action, exactly. Yeah. Get into action. Don't stop yourself. You can learn while doing it. And uh, yes. so, yes. Yeah, so and you will was, learn a lot by yeah, doing totally. it. And by watching others. So, so that was it for today's podcast at the More Gigs podcast to inspire artists, entertainers to do more marketing promotion to promote themselves promote their art promote who they are because most of the time the personality of the artist is, is usually very important because people will like you so they will be uh, inclined to look at your art if they they like you already so thank you so much mike it's always a pleasure thank you everyone for watching and i'll put the uh, outro I changed uh, something in today's outro. Oh, so I can't wait. I let's can't wait see, to let's see. see. Yeah, let's see if the, the ones that watch the other episode will see the difference. So, Thank you for being a guest on my podcast, Eli. Hi, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, you're welcome. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone.